Okay, as promised, this is our third teaching video. We'll proceed. Okay, last teaching video, I stopped here on how I explain why we have three approach and why does all three approach will result to the same amount of national income. So, dia tak semudah macam kata, nak buat apa nak susah-susah nak hafal tiga formula. So, I already show you kan, we have three formula here, lots of things that you need to memorize. Kalau dah tahu jawapan dia confirm sama, ambil je lah satu hafal. Pakai je approach ni. Cannot. Cannot. Uh, because which approach you will use, it depends on the question given. You tak boleh main semua dan wadang je. Ambil je mana yang you rasa berkenan, hafal yang tu cannot. It depends on the question given. Okay. So, contoh soalan. Macam ni. Dia akan bagi item. Item, 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 item. You kena siasat. Item ni ber, adalah approach yang mana. Kita ada tiga approach kan. Output approach, income approach, expenditure approach. Setiap item yang belah atas untuk setiap approach ni adalah berbeza. Nampak? Ke sini, ke sini, ke sini berbeza. Tapi item belah bawah ni sama untuk setiap approach. Nampak tak good news dia? You tahu satu je insyaAllah yang, yang lagi dua yang beres dah Tapi bahagian atas ni You kena careful Sebab bahagian atas ni Once you salah ambil item yang tak berkenaan For example Item untuk expenditure is consumption, investment, government, expenditure and export and change in stock Tapi you masukkan pula wages and salary satu lagi kat dalam ni Item untuk income approach So automatically Awak punya item yang uh, Sorry Gross domestic product Apa yang you akan dapat mula-mula tu Dia akan Salah ah. Okay So you kena Ingat Macam mana nak Kenal Item sebelah atas ni Supaya Yang pertama sekali Which is your Gross domestic product ni You akan betul If not Dia akan salah ah. Okay So here Kita tengok dari segi Formula dulu before we proceed Okay, I've told you we have three approach Income approach, expenditure approach and product approach So, apa yang membezakan antara approach ni Like I told you Cuma item sebelah atas sebelum kita dapat cari GDP GDP why? G for gross, D for domestic, P is for product GDP So, afterwards you boleh tulis short form dia je Gross domestic product So to find gross domestic product If the question asks you to use income approach This is the item yang you kena tambah Tapi kalau question 2 is about expenditure approach This is the item yang you kena tambah Tapi kalau question 2 is about product approach This is the item yang you kena tambah So first of all kita kena faham dulu Yang ke atas tu Item untuk setiap approach tu Macam mana nak senang ingat Supaya you tak ada masalah dalam formula okay, First of all Kita okay, tengok income approach Get here guys Look at that item First of all is wages and salaries Have you heard about this? Masa kita belajar circular flow Wages and salaries And then we have interest We have rent We have profit. So what is this? Going back to the circular flow. Rent, wages, interest, profit. So apa kita ni? Apa benda ni? This is the payment to the factors of production. Ini lah yang kita panggil income kepada household. Because household owns the uh, the factors of production. If they sell the factors of production, they will generate their income. If they sell land, they will get rent. If they sell labor, they will get wages. If they will sell capital, they will get interest. If they sell entrepreneur, they will get profit. As simple as that.
see wages wages interest interest rent rent profit profit but very easy to memorize the item for income approach this is just the payment to the factors of production number line wages sorry number line salaries adalah wages bukan wages yang pakai kasut tu ya bukan foto tay wages juga gaji income from employment and self employment that is if we, we use capital we will get interest ataupun nama lain dia adalah dividend uh, so itu adalah item untuk income approach untuk land tak ada benda lain dah confirm payment dia income dia adalah rent and untuk profit is the payment for entrepreneur tapi ada tambahan sedikit lah profit ada dua jenis distributed and undistributed profit so kalau ada dua-dua tambah dua-dua kalau ada satu je ambil satu je Bear in mind kalau dia suruh pakai income approach You jangan sewenang-wenangnya masuk item untuk lain You wajib ambil item ni saja. Wages and salaries, tambah interest, tambah rent, tambah profit Kalau ada dua-dua profit, tambah dua-dua profit Then barulah you dapat item yang pertama which is Cross domestic product Simple Boleh ingat tak rasa? Formula untuk income approach Before we can find the first one which is cross domestic product Next is the formula for expenditure approach. Ah, cuba tengok ya, expenditure approach. Consumption, investment, government expenditure, net export. Okay, so this one, you might not be familiar with government expenditure and net export. But you are already familiar with these two. Because you tengok dalam, dalam circular flow awak kan? Kalau kita nama expenditure adalah perbelanjaan. Perbelanjaan untuk household kita panggil sebagai consumption. Perbelanjaan untuk firm adalah investment. Perbelanjaan apa benda? Bukan duit masuk tu. Yelah, you pinjam, you kena bayar lah balik kan? Ha, sebab kita panggil perbelanjaan untuk firm, investment Kita pinjam, kita borrow to make investment And then, perbelanjaan untuk government Okay, here I will explain if they have government Okay, sekejap kita tengok lagi like. Alright, so before Okay, kita ada household, kita ada firm, okay, household, sell, FOPs, okay, lepas tu firm, oh, ekber, siapa ya? firm will pay lah and rent, wages, interest and profit ok so ini akan jadi Y H pendapatan household Okay, that is firm produce goods and services, and then they will sell to households. But households are not million. Goods and services, and after W, also can be pay all. It can be YF, which is consumption. Okay, what happen if we have government? Ni kalau dua sectors kan? Ha. Kalau tiga sectors, saya akan ada satu lagi kat sini Which is the government Household YH Untuk household Kita akan tengok outflow of money 
duit keluar kalau sebelum ada government duit keluar dia satu untuk consumption satu lagi bila dia ada leakage which is saving tapi bila dia ada government sekarang ni household akan ada satu lagi duit keluar which is dia kena bayar taxes juga Oh, kena bayar So sekarang ni duit keluar household Bila ada tiga sektor akan bertambah satu lagi T stand for taxes Well Untuk firm Kita akan tengok Inflow of Money Duit masuk Okay So why H YH is from pertama bila household berbelanja kedua bila dia dapat investment okay, saya luaskan sikit ok anak pandang masuk ini kita panggil injection so apa yang masuk which is investment ok sudah so, akan dapat duit daripada investment satu lagi, bila government ada, government akan bagi anak panah masuk, masuk kepada house, uh, firm which is government spending. Macam subsidi lah, government bagi pada peniaga kan. So inilah source satu lagi, GS sebab nak asingkan dengan GG for stand for government. But GS means government spending Tapi you cannot write down as subsidies You must write down as government spending So this is the money government spend Towards the firm Of course firm pun kita bayar cukai Tapi sekarang untuk firm kita tak nak tengok duit keluar Kita nak tengok duit masuk Inflow money So bila dia dapat bantuan daripada kerajaan lah Bantuan kepada peniaga Okay So saya alih lah ni Dia dah serabut kat situ ah. Tapi nanti I will draw a nice one for you For your notes Alright Sebab tu lah Untuk uh, Wait Untuk the formula kita sambung kejap lagi Sekarang kita nak tengok dulu Kita, kita habiskan dalam 4 sectors uh, Satu lagi bila kita ada ROW The rest of the world So what happened here First Daripada household akan keluar lagi duit Masuk kepada rest of the world apa benda yang harus buat Sampai kena bayar kepada foreign sector ni Bila dia M M post stand for Import Bila ada negara foreign Harus nak beli barang import dah pula Salah-salah Sorry Saya letak dekat YH Saya kena letak kat sini Dia akan beli barang import Duit keluar lagi So bila lagi banyak sectors inside the economy Lagi banyaklah duit akan keluar Okay Well Firm akan dapat apa daripada rest of the world Dia akan dapat Duit Duit apa Bila rest of the world Beli barang yang from import Eh, from export So Tambahan dia Dia akan dapat duit daripada X Export Hopefully you are okay with that C 
see here Betul tak Untuk household kita tengok Outflow of money Bila ada 4 sektor 4 lah duit akan keluar Pertama bila kita belanja Kita dua Bila kita simpan duit Ketiga bila kita bayar cukai pada kerajaan Bila ada rest of the world Kita beli pula barang import 4 duit keluar Untuk firm pula Kita akan tengok duit masuk Pertama bila household belanja Dia dapat duit Kedua bila dia dapatkan investment Daripada bank Duit masuk Ketiga bila government bagi government spending Bagi bantuan pada peniaga Dia masuk Keempat Bila negara luar Beli barangan yang Dia export Yelah dia export keluar barangan Kan firm jual barang luar negara Dia dapat duit So this is The four things that happen here When we have Apa Four sectors of circular flow Okay, so kita nak compare with the formula. Huh. Expenditure approach. Kita ada consumption, investment, government expenditure. Atau government spending, nama lain ni government expenditure. Government spending or government expenditure. Perbelanjaan kerajaan sama je. Okay. And last kali kita ada Export and import So macam mana nak hafal mas, uh, chap, uh, apa, uh, Approach yang kedua ni It's basically The expenditure of The sectors Sektor sekadar empat kan? Household Firm Government And last kali adalah The rest of the world This is the sectors So perbelanjaan untuk household Kita panggil sebagai Consumption C Perbelanjaan untuk firm kita panggil sebagai Investment I Perbelanja untuk government kita panggil government spending ataupun government expenditure. And perbelanjaan untuk rest of the world kita panggil net export. Net export ni adalah export dah tolak siap-siap dengan import. Dia wajib je tu dia tak boleh terbalik import tolak export dia wajib. Bila export dah tolak siap-siap dengan import You akan dapat net export Ya ok, boleh ni Ingatkan ni Formula untuk expenditure approach ni Maksudnya perbelanjaan sectors Kalau you ingat sectors, you akan ingat perbelanjaan dia Yang ni, income untuk factors Kalau income approach ni Income kepada factors of production uh, Factors of production Okay, so what are our factors of production? Land Labor Capital The fourth one is Entrepreneur So income dia Pendapatan dia Nama dia kan income eh? so, Land, income dia Rent to labor wages and salaries untuk capital interest ataupun dia ada kadang-kadang tu dividend untuk entrepreneur profit profit ni boleh di dua distributed dengan undistributed Very simple way to memorize the formula, isn't it? So, you dapat dua dah. Formula for income approach, formula for expenditure approach. Sekarang ni kita nak tengok formula untuk product approach. Macam mana ingat item dia sebelum cari GDP ni? Very simple. Product ni maksudnya 
industri dalam ekonomi dalam negara Wah, bagi culture energy manufacturing construction so maksudnya sekarang ni industri yang ada dalam Malaysia bukan Malaysia lah dan semua negara lah kan kalau nak tengok nasional ikan Malaysia industri in Malaysia lah tapi yang saya list ni emang bukan semua sekali tak muat kertas saya nak list semua sekali so ia adalah antaranya Uh, okay, so ada banyak lagi Insurance and banking uh, Industry government services Perkhidmatan kerajaan kan uh, Ni ada services dia bagi So be careful lah Ada banyak So nak ingat senangnya kan Okay, kalau cuba tak pertanian Energy, tenaga, manufacturing peng, 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 Penghasilan eh. uh, Construction, pembinaan Transport, pengangkutan Trade, perdagangan Public admin Pertakbiran awam National defense Pertahanan Lokasi pendidikan Dan kesihatan And other types of Industry Other types of services Okay So this is product approach So nak terang lagi Apa suluh kan Ini boleh beza right Kalau income approach Bayaran kepada factors of production Tapi ada tambahan Kita profit No jenis Distributed Or distributed Kalau ada pelaka Tambah je pelaka Semua tu tambah Yang kena dapat Item pertama And then, untuk expenditure approach, I'm sorry I forgot about this, but this one is not important, okay. Selain the the, the, the expenditure of the sectors, which is consumption, investment, government, expenditure, and export, okay, there's satu tambahan which is changing stock. Uh, so, aku kalau orang jumpa item changing stock atau penambah lain di inventories, itu adalah item untuk expenditure approach. And last, kali untuk product approach, anything yang dapat macam industry, dia duduk bawah product approach you tambah everything you akan dapat gross domestic product very simple ok so what would I uh, mention here is bahagian bawah ni ok aim kita kita nak cari kat sini topik ni kan about national income nak cari pendapatan negara tapi before we can find national income awak kena cari GDP dulu gross domestic product You kena cari gross national product pula lepas tu. After that. Ha, tapi kalau yang ni dia berbeza sedikit. Mula-mula you cari gross domestic product tapi market price. Ini tak ada. Ha, tu beza dia. Tu income dengan pro, eh, expenditure approach tu beza dia. Yang pertama ni dia panggil gross domestic product saja. Yang ni kita panggil gross domestic product market price. Tapi expenditure approach dengan product approach sama sebiji. Bawah tu sama. Ha, gross domestic product market price. And then, kita ada gross national product, market price. Same here, gross national product, tapi ini market price. Okay. And then, kita ada tambahan, which is gross national product, factor cost pula. Ha, ini market price, ni factor cost. Gross national product juga, tapi factor cost. And then, barulah you boleh cari national income. Ataupun nama lainnya, net national product. Maksudnya, step dia lebih sikit berbanding yang ni. Yang ni. 1, 2, terus jumpa dari sini ikam ni 1, 2, 3, baru jumpa dari sini ikam Same goes with product approach 1, 2, 3, baru jumpa dari sini ikam Ataupun nama lain dia, net national product Ok, tadi akan ada tambahan Selepas kita dah jumpa cari national income Kita akan cari personal income Untuk dua-dua pun sama Income approach pun ada personal income As you can see that, the formula is Exactly the same, transfer payment direct Ia tolak indirect tax, tolak indirect profit Tolak EPF, tolak susu, tolak retention ni, tolak insurance. Same here. Also same here. Tak perlu risau dah. Tahu satu, then beres untuk semua approach. And the last kali, kita akan cari disposable income. And what is disposable income? Satu je formula yang you kena pakai untuk cari disposable income, you kena tolak personal income tax. That's it. We have that. Okay, so I have the simplified version here. Wait, huh? I'll find this. Find this one. 
Kalau untuk both approach Sebab kita nak compare kan Okay Of course this is our main target To get the national income Okay, we would like to get here. Main target of this particular chapter is to get national income. Same, eh? For product approach, it's the same. We would like to get national income. But before we can find national income, this is the step we need to fulfill. Kita tak boleh terus dapat national income, tak cari GDP dulu. Okay, so for income approach, step there, dapatkan GDP. I've told you, stand for G, gross, D, domestic, P, product. So, afterwards, tak perlu nak pakai nama penuh dia kan? Pakai short form dia je. Lepas GDP, you kena cari G, N, P, gross, national, product. Then, you akan jumpa N, N, P, ataupun N, I. Then, N, P, ni net national product, nama lain bagi N, I. Then, you akan cari personal income. And then, you akan cari disposable income. I'm not sure why, why is it so far away. Oh, so what you say type scary scary. Sorry about that. Okay. So, ada five step kalau income approach. But, kalau product and expenditure approach, see, product and expenditure, dia sama kan? Belah bawah ni sama. So, step pertama, cari GDP market price. Step kedua, cari GNP market price. Step ketiga, cari GNP factor cost. Dan baru lagi jumpa N, N, P, N, I. Sama ke kat sini. Nasional income atau nama lain dia national product. Lepas tu baru cari P, I sama. Dia cari D, I. Tapi because dia ada step tambahan which is this one. Okay. So untuk product and expenditure approach, you have six step to be memorized. Okay. So in the, my next teaching video, saya akan ajar how to differentiate between this GDP and GNP and so on.